building wealth in crypto, a lot of this is going to be playing into what could be the IRA aspect of things in terms of investment, along with some other components that are really starting to shake loose right now in the crypto space in terms of instruments for uh, financial investing for your future. We'll break into all of that good stuff today. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. Um, there's a lot happening in the space around uh, IRAs, crypto IRAs specifically. And also within this, there are many players starting to come into the musical chair game. And you guys will get a chance to see all this. There's going to be a whole slew of information here. I do want to thank our sponsor today, and that is rightly so, I Trust Capital. If you're looking at going into crypto IRAs and maybe wanting to stay away from the traditional institutions out there, here's a good choice. Uh, take a look at iTrust Capital. You can invest in gold, crypto, silver, uh, all using your IRA. It's very easy uh, to do. They do have a, a lot of tokens. They've got, of course, staking available now. So you can take a look at all the different types of uh, tool sets there. And uh, six billion in transactions, over 185,000 accounts uh, within this platform. So it's again one of the the titans of the space. Make sure and check them out. Just use our link below. You'll get a hundred dollar funding reward. So just if you use that link, make sure and do that, uh, and that'll tie you in. Thanks again for all that good stuff. All right, let's get into a couple of components here because I have people ask me this all the time. What's the what are you gonna have to really kind of set into retirement? I've been doing a lot of these. Um, kind of these education meetups with high net worth individuals we've been really kind of exploring for most people their first step into crypto and they're starting to look at this in their mid 40s this seems to be kind of the sweet spot right now at least the people that I talk to and uh, I think it's in line with what a lot of the research that we're going to show you guys today here's Americans now say they will be uh, need a, a 1.25 million to retire comfortably uh, in the yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Sorry, sorry about that. Just so they can see the notes. Uh, anyway, Americans say that they're going to need about one point. People are sending me notes here all the time. So we have a whole uh, crew behind us that are shooting stuff at me. Uh, so when I'm sending them uh, screenshots here, it's all usually kind of a hyperactive uh, scenario. But anyway, adults say they're going to need a million two to basically retire comfortably. Uh, and then that's, of course, uh, a 20% increase from last year. That's a big increase from last year. Some of that is inflationary, uh, but I think also uh, many of that is the scenario of what they're seeing within their current markets and what their uh, mutual funds and some of their current retirement accounts are, are expressing in terms of losses. So this is a factor that I think a lot of people play out. Again, timing is everything in many of these scenarios. If you're in your boomer years and you're looking at your market right now, we could be entering a stage where we may not see those kinds of highs for quite some time. I know a lot of people who actually did do a lot of cash outs and went to cash positions. So um, many people who missed that window, now they're in situations where their portfolios are 40, 50, 60, 70% down and they're facing a retirement age, which is elongating their overall work uh, life balance. So uh, not, not necessarily good news for individuals who have seen their retirement savings decline, just kind of that point. Average retirement nest egg has fallen 11% uh, to 80, this is this surprised me, 11% to 86,869. Uh, this, this is the average. So this tells me that we are highly undervalued, especially in our, our aging population, uh, in terms of retirement, which means maybe these people are going to have to stay in the workforce for a lot longer than what was anticipated. Uh, and, and of course, this plays into kind of some scenarios that could play out um, around the economy as well. So there's a lot of factors that uh, really could apply to not only the investment trends that are happening, but also the kinds of investments they may end up going into, which is why I think we'll see more and more starting to look at some of these risk assets. So again, those closest to retirement, uh, working baby boomers, ages 58 to 76, most likely to say they feel behind with 71% bank rate found. Uh, many of them are near retirement reported, wish they had started a lot earlier. And this is things that I've talked about with uh, younger people in your, whether you're in the 30s, maybe you're all the way down in your 20s, you got a chance to make some mistakes. But if you're in your 30s, uh, that's when I think things have to get really serious about starting to do those kinds of investments. Now, some people... And there's different thought, you know, trains of thought here. Many people will look at 
you know, retirement accounts. Some people might look at securities. Uh, some people look at building businesses, all of which are, you know, for the most part, have good value. Me, I look at both a combination of all three, building businesses, securities, and retirements. Obviously, securities are the traditional, but in the past, that has now started to slip over into uh, digital assets, for at least for me, in terms of my makeup. Uh, so I think that is a big factor of how that blend might really take off in the future. Top reason why uh, people cited uh, this was 59% is that they want to continue to work and save money, which again, this this is good. Uh, and I do think we'll see a, a little bit of that aging population really kind of uh, trying to elongate those careers. I don't think there's enough of those that will do that. But however, I'd love to see the real numbers on, because there's many people that are just going to retire and figure out a way, um, which is a tough one considering uh, the, especially the scenario that we're faced with right now around Social Security. So speaking of that, shaky faith in Social Security when it comes to retirement income, individual surveys that expect to draw about a mix a 401k and other retirement funds, uh, 27% uh, for 27%, and then Social Security, 26%. Personal savings around 22. Not a big, uh, not a bad mix or makeup uh, for that, but um, I think this is a problem where a lot of people are. And this was something that was um, was mentioned here in the report. 45% of people basically said that they don't necessarily say they can imagine a time when Social Security no longer exists. That could still happen for Gen X, uh, definitely for millennial. And obviously by the time we get to, uh, you know, the Gen Z, I, I think the structure of how we do retirement will be self-managed here in the United States. And I think that's going to be kind of the future there. I want to play a quick uh, clip here just for you, polling data that's out uh, that voters want to see crypto markets uh, see in the crypto markets uh, that really is geared around some of the aspect from a um, political standpoint. But listen to this clip real quick. Big new polling data out this morning on what voters want to see in terms of crypto and regulations. Elon Mui joins us now uh, with that story. Hey, Elon. Well, good morning, Joe. Voters of both parties are skeptical of the crypto industry, but still believe it could be the future of finance. That's the finding from a new poll out today from the Crypto Council for Innovation, whose members include Coinbase, FTX, and Andreessen Horowitz. It found about a third of voters have a favorable view of crypto, compared to 40 percent who were unfavorable. And more than half of voters said the industry needs more regulation. Only 7 percent said it should have less. However, voters are split over which party they trust to do it, with nearly even numbers for Democrats versus Republicans. But one key trend in this data is how well crypto polls with young people and black and Latino voters. More than a third of Latinos said they'd be more likely to support a candidate who's positive on crypto. 30 percent of black Americans said they would, the highest levels of any demographic groups. In fact, one of the main reasons that voters overall are excited about crypto is the ability to reach the unbanked. The other is its role as an alternative to what the poll called big banks and Wall Street power brokers. So, guys, a plurality of voters, 41 percent, thinks that crypto does have a lot of potential but has yet to deliver. And that is true for Republicans, Democrats and for independents. Back over to you. All right, so a lot of good stuff in there, and I think most of this is is somewhat accurate for the grassroots movement that we've seen in crypto for some time. Most of this, I'm sure many of you guys are not surprised at some of these things. I did want to kind of uh, show a little bit more on this pioneer polling here, and I'll zoom in on a little bit of the information. So this is based on, do you approve or disapprove of the way Biden is in. You can kind of see uh, all the negative numbers right there. This goes in from Republicans, male, female, under 45, over 45, college, no college, etc., uh, into the demographics here. But almost everyone, uh, including the African Americans, which are at uh, plus 31 right there, that one was the one that surprised me the most. Latino at minus 20. Um, that's interesting. And then those who own cryptocurrencies, minus 22. You've got um, if an election for the U.S. Congress to hit your district was held today, which of the following candidates uh, would you likely? So you've got Dems and, uh, of course, uh, the Republicans in there. So it's kind of a, a mixed bag right now. We're seeing a lot of movement in the space, a lot closer than what I thought. Cryptocurrency still favoring 
up slightly, but still down in some areas. So female a little down. This is a problem right here. I think we've got to get uh, women in the household really moving in that direction. Uh, Democrats, I don't. It doesn't surprise me here. Same thing with independents and uh, Republicans, because I think in general, what we're going to find from our politicians is that there's going to be some struggle and some pushback here, primarily because there hasn't been uh, a real solution yet on the crypto lobbying side. And until there's money at the table, uh, you're going to continue to see pushback from Washington because they just simply want money. And uh, that's really what is going to change the game at this in a long term. There'll be a lot of dancing around between here and the next presidential election, but I think at some point we will start to see this kind of move. The good thing was is all the big banks had negative, uh, you know, pretty negative uh, numbers as well. Republicans were a little bit more strong on it. Uh, Independents, definitely uh, negative. And you can kind of see, not not uh, necessarily a, a huge... Um, overwhelming performance there. So again, big banks bad, uh, crypto good. And I think many of the younger audience and younger uh, demographics are starting to really move in this direction. Aging population, having a potential problem with being able to uh, move into their retirement years. So they really need some performance in risk assets to be able to maybe help make up for what we're seeing here in terms of uh, devalued assets overall. So uh, the industry is really in a, a bit of a, a mess right now. And, and when I say the industry, the investment industry as a whole, uh, when people look at, if you are at near a retirement age in the next three to five years, that's a problem right now. Uh, if you're outside that window, timing is everything. If you're in that 10-year range, 15-year range, 20-year range, a lot of things can cycle through this. And I think many of you will probably change the way that you go about trusting the status quo, especially as we start to face through a lot of what's happening here for building wealth in the next evolution, especially around the next run on what I think will be the risk assets uh, and what we'll see there. Almost 50% of Gen Z and millennials want crypto in their retirement funds. So this is pretty simple, uh, pretty easy there. This number is going to go to about 80% in the next three years. You watch 80% of Gen Z and millennials will be in this um, in this area. And I think we're gonna continue to see a large percentage of the Generation X start to shift over into a lot more digital assets. Right now it's about 30%, 35%. Um, but I think that's gonna be a big factor here, guys, for sure. Uh, it shouldn't come as a surprise. Survey found 43% of Gen Z, 47% of millennials, all invest in cryptocurrencies outside their 401k already. Uh, which could suggest the group's affinity for the asset class. This is the other problem. The amount of investments happening outside those 401s and outside the traditional asset centers, that is causing a lot of problem and a lot of heartache in traditional finance. And that's why you're seeing the moves that we've been seeing. And that, of course, has been everything from Fidelity and all that kind of stuff. We'll, we'll talk about that here in a moment. Uh, but really, the question is, if you're playing all this out, when is the next run for you. Are you in a position, whether you're early to the game, late to the game, maybe you're in the middle, um, when is the next run? Because this is the scenario that everybody's looking for on these risk assets. The, the likelihood of seeing you know, a 5 to 10x run on Bitcoin is real, especially when you're talking about an $18,000 Bitcoin, uh, even though we're trading right now almost 21. Um, I think there's some big opportunities here right now, even though we, we do kind of see the whole Bitcoin uh, situation right now. If you're not, uh, by the way, if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button and make sure and like the video. One thing that we are doing for you guys is we're dropping a lot more content into the Diamond Circle. Uh, we just did a Bitcoin update in the Diamond Circle. Uh, it's probably going to publish tonight or tomorrow morning. Very interesting stuff. Make sure and, and jump into the Diamond Circle. It's free. Just click the link below. Uh, I want to get over to this article right here. Um, you guys know Mark Gusco. He's on our channel quite a bit. Uh, but the next Bitcoin rally to start in Q3 uh, 2023, uh, Yusko kind of talked a little bit about this. Now, Mark and I have had this conversation many times. And uh, in the beginning, Mark was really kind of looking at an early pivot. I think he's backed that off now and is in alignment with what my theory is, is that we'll continue to see pressures through Q4 and possibly Q1 and maybe Q3. Two is when we could see that occur. Now, there could be some scenarios where the Fed does ease uh, as early as Q1. 
likelihood right now, I'd give it about a 60, maybe 65% chance. Um, a little bit better than even. Um, but right now, USCO is kind of talking about this. The next halving expected to occur in early 2024. Zoom up on that for you guys. Uh, usually, the market will anticipate about nine months. That is true. Uh, and if the block rewards get cut in half to 3125 uh, from 625, then the price has got to double in order to the miners to continue to make money. Yes. Good law of simple dynamics and analysis here. Yes, for sure. Uh, that is the way it's going to play out. Digital assets will ultimately be uh, and prove to be uncorrelated with equity markets. I do think that will happen. It's just a matter of when. And, and timing is everything here, as I mentioned here, along with the investment in wealth. Another thing as you guys are looking at, whether it's digital assets, uh, real estate, gold, silver, going into securities, businesses, all those kind of things. One thing that I always recommend is just look at diversification. Do not get, even though I love crypto and we get into it a lot here on the show, uh, it is not and should not be in my position for most people who are at high risk levels. And there's kind of different levels here. If you're very young, sure, you can go up to 25, 35, maybe 40% of your assets because uh, you got a chance to remake those if, in case of catastrophe. But if you're in your mid-range uh, earning years, you know that's probably more in uh, tune with me, which is around 20% of the assets. Um, and if you are in your late years, it starts to come down even further. So just be looking at good diversification tactics uh, as you guys are doing. And again, not in investment advice. Uh, we always you know, do these kind of market movers from time to time. So you'll get this kind of stuff along with data and other research, but not investment advice in there. Uh, traditional assets are driven by economic growth, uh, Fed policies and inflation. Crypto is driven by the technology itself and adoption. And I, I agree with Yusko here. I don't think it's going to be just millennials because because millennials do not necessarily have all the cash yet. We need some Gen X and Gen, Gen uh, the boomers to essentially be able to also be in this run up on the next cycle. It needs to kind of come from all markets. So I do think that uh, that alone, if you think about the number of whales that could play into this uh, in the early market uh, growth of when we see this next run, uh, those will be the institutional and also drive institutional numbers, which again drives adoption, all that good stuff. Uh, so back to the point of uh, the scenario here. How do millennials and how do these uh, you know, new crypto investors and digital asset investors uh, consider scenarios like fidelity. So you've got asset management uh, fidelity doubles down on crypto hiring spree with another 100 employees. I, I kind of thought this was a little low for uh, fidelity. I thought that might be somewhere in the tune of like 500 employees because if they're really going to get a large amount of interest, then um, I think it's going to take a lot more people. Uh, and you kind of talk about it, bringing the uh, total number of employees in its virtual assets division to around 500. Um, Bloomberg uh, also talked about that the firm is planning to add staff members uh, to the client services, ops, biz dev, all that good stuff. The tech side, I think, is where they need to focus. Uh, and then Fidelity Digital Assets in 2018 has reportedly attempted to capitalize on the recent troubles of crypto assets, uh, which, of course, caused massive employee turnover, all that good stuff. And then you saw uh, what's happened with Coinbase, Crypto.com, BlockFi, all those kind of scenarios. So there are still a lot of skepticism within it, but at the same time, the fact that Fidelity is moving into a custody position within crypto, uh, I think speaks massive in terms of the future of this space. Offering customers exposure now, ETH through the Fidelity Ethereum Index Fund. The fund is only available to traders who are able to invest, here's the kicker, 50K at minimum. So um, unless you're ready to go into that. And where I think this will play is into the Gen X and the uh, late boomers because they are still they still have earning years left and this isn't on, you know, a risk on asset that could play out in a good way for those kinds of investors that are willing to put a 50K bun uh, in there. Don't forget to drop some questions in over on the side and make sure and smash uh, the like button because it does help out uh, in terms of people who are trying to get into the space maybe for the first time. Here's Fidelity's website, Crypto at Fidelity. Man, I just, this is so surreal to see that right there. Crypto at Fidelity. We know crypto. 
Wow, from Bitcoin mining, train your brain, focus on education. That's what we say all the time. Uh, go broad with ETFs. Not what I say all the time. But the point that they're really starting to move in this direction. Look at that, a metaverse ETF right there, my friends. All of those people that talk to me on the weekends and when I do these sessions, they're always asking about metaverse and gaming and, and the risk and all that. There's too much. You have to learn too much, all that. Well, there's your easy way right there is uh, go into a Metaverse ETF. So I don't know. Do you guys like that approach or are you more self-managed? I'm kind of curious of how our audience deals with your own wealth management. Do you try to go your own course or are you starting to look into these types of institutional uh, tool sets that are out there? Is um, Here's a quick article on this on Investopedia. How does the Fidelity 401 uh, that allows crypto work? Um, there's a couple of things that they talk about here. Uh, it, it became the first firm to announce that you know employees can do this. The company will t uh, make this available to all 23,000 employers. That's a big deal. Um, and this is going to be good because it, it is going to open up exposure to a lot of people that have never had exposure to crypto at all. Don't have an exchange account. Maybe have never even considered or watched one video on or listened to a podcast on what's happening in crypto. So that may open up some uh, very interesting space. We'll see in terms of the amount of adoption quickly uh, and if they are one of the keys. I still think Fidelity is going to be a good one, but I don't necessarily think it's going to be one of the big guys that really make it, uh, pull it across the, the line. Ultimately, it's going to depend on the employers or on the employers whether the employees can add Bitcoin to their retirement accounts. This is something that uh, you guys can help with right now. And what I mean by that is if you are employed and you know about Bitcoin, you know about all these crypto assets, educate your, your employer because there's a lot of people that are probably in your business right now. Maybe you have 100 people, 200, more, 100, you know, more than that, that probably don't know anything. You can't get to them quick enough to try to explain all this. So um, what I would suggest is to try to at least put out enough of that positive vibe into your company so that at least your uh, financial administrators are saying, let's go, let's go investigate this. Because if we could bring something that's unique and different, it's also going to help us differentiate from the pack, which is a big deal as well. Because we need to hire new people, and most of them are millennials. They're going to want this. Uh, so it's a big, uh, big factor that kind of plays into this. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, even if employers want to allow employees to add Bitcoin to, the, to their 401 uh, accounts at the level which they will be able to do so will be limited. Uh, it will determine the ceiling, but the platform will permit allocations, uh, won't permit allocations of more than 20%, although the number could change. Most likely that will over time. But again, I, th I was actually surprised that 20% was going to be offered because I, I really felt that there would be a lot more suppression there in terms of those assets for sure. All right, so uh, here you have a political story that is really uh, kind of, and I think it plays into this. Do not expect our lawmakers to bring this across the line. Now, they will eventually when the money comes along and they get paid. Um, but Democratic senators now chiding fidelity uh, for investments for Bitcoin exposed retirement. This is a problem because they're like, wait a minute, you're going out too early, man. We haven't got our, you know, our dip in, th in the water. We haven't got our slice of the pie. We need some of that round table. And they're not getting a chance to get it. Uh, this early because there hasn't been really a structure for the, not only the aspect of the, we'll call it the engine that drives DC, which is basically the dollar, uh, but also the lobbyist groups that are really going to start to help drive this forward. There's a handful of them that are starting to work in this. And I know you've got, you know, thoughts about Sam Bankman-Fried and his movement on his bill and then all that kind of mess that's happening right now. But just be aware, continue to drive the message to your representatives. I think that's going to be a factor uh, for sure. Here's you've got a good example of this. This is Democrats Dick Durbin, Elizabeth Warren, Tina Smith. They sent their letter uh, last Tuesday. I wonder if this is the same Democrats that sent their letter to say, hey, let's maybe uh, pull out of the war and then saying, oh, well, wait a minute. We don't really mean that. Let's go ahead and do, let's go ahead and stay on the nuclear war path here instead. Just ridiculous, these people. Uh, Anyway, I don't want to get going on politics. It just pisses me off. <laughs> when saving for retirement is already a challenge for so many Americans, why would Fidelity allow all of those who can be safe, be exposed to an untested, highly volatile asset like Bitcoin? 
Oh my. This is just, it's just, um, this is pure caca. I love this. The fact, the good thing is, is that I think most of Americans see right through the BS. And the beauty is, I think we're going to continue to see a march into a new evolution around all this good stuff of really kind of democratizing where real wealth is going to be built. So you guys just keep on letting those guys play in their own sandbox for now. But at some point, we got to go in there and we're going to have to fight the bullies. And they're going to be big by then, but they're going to have some money in their uh, big handout, uh, you know, so we got to be ready to do that and play the game. Uh, here's the Virginia Pension Fund uh, now investing in crypto lending in a bid to boost returns. Uh, this, I, again, this gets back into the scenario where when it's good for them, it's okay. That's all right. And that's the scenario. You're going to see this uh, switch flip at some point, whether that's this cycle after midterms or whether it's in the next presidential collection or election, I should say collection, um, uh, because of the donations that you have to make to be able to get that president in and the amount of money that's being spent, ridiculous, uh, to be able to put a, a, an elected official in office just out of, this, out of this world. But the point is, is that when it's okay for them, they're going to be jumping on this left and right, both sides of their face. Uh, this is the pathetic thing that happens around uh, our lawmakers, which is uh, continues to drive me crazy. Some of the yields that the, you're able to achieve in a yield farming strategy are really attractive because some of the people who have stepped back from that space. So what are they saying here? Oh yeah, because all of the other plebes that got destru destroyed on Voyager and Celsius, yes, we still say those names, uh, even though they are, you know, warded off like the exorcist. Uh, but the point is, is that as long as they can suck up and get in there and get those yields, that's okay. That's okay. So the system recently placed $35 million each with the uh, Parataxis Capital Digital Yield Fund, VanEx New Finance Income Fund, which aims to provide income to investors through short-term lending arrangements. Does this sound familiar to you? Any of this sound familiar? $5 billion Fairfax County Employment Retirement System uh, and the $1.8 billion Fairfax County. This is a police officer's retirement system has already been investing in crypto before making the decision to dip into yield farming. Yield farming, they're going into. Uh, so again, remember, let's all keep in mind that we almost had a, a cataclysmic event occur into in, in Europe and in the UK because of mutual funds and because of pensions. Those were the big catacly cataclysmic scenarios that were on the table where we could have seen a, a huge meltdown. We haven't seen that here in the U.S. yet, um, mainly because these guys are, I think, just too uneducated to really understand what's happening in this space just yet to really make real moves. So, I mean, why aren't they just backing off, putting this in ETH and Bitcoin, playing a couple of altcoin projects, and moving on? Because this is uh, going to continue to be a very interesting uh, scenario. Um, I want to get into a couple of other things, but I know we got a... a uh, a poll coming up. I want to talk about this last uh, little component right here. And this is Glassnode acquires crypto tax and portfolio uh, platform accounting.com or accounting. <laughs> I love that one. Accounting.com. Uh, I think this is a good move in the sense that Glassnode, among many others, are, are probably going to start to structure around what we're going to need in the accounting space for not only taxes, but also dealing with a lot of the regulatory requirements that we're going to need to jump through as hoops. Granted, it's coming in the next few years. Uh, so be on the lookout. So you want to look at companies that have those kinds of alignments and that are really teeing up uh, for those kind of partnerships. I think that's going to be a, a cool thing uh, for sure. Uh, they're a data intelligence provider focused on on-chain financial metrics. Uh, they also uh, said they'll deal uh, deal will allow users both platforms to track their portfolios in one place. Uh, once accounting uh, accounting uh, is integrated, they got to change this name. <laughs> they got to change that name. The acquisition continues to trend uh, high level M and A activity uh, and data in the analytics space. And I think that is something that uh, I would uh, use as a takeaway here, guys. Is be ready because there's a lot of of M and A activity which may open up some opportunities in other investment opportunities. So pay attention uh, to what's happening uh, in the space out there for sure. Let's jump over to our poll real quick and see what we got here. Okay, what are the bare minimum you personally need to retire? 500K to 1 mil, 
So everybody's kind of in that same, um, very similar, 28%, 30% though, saying 3 million, that will do it. Based on current situation with the markets, the expected long-term inflation, the changing of the dynamics within our social construct that we call the United States, depending on if you're eating the blue pill or the red pill, all that plays into it. Let's get to some questions. Um, how about the stock market? My stocks are actually down compared to my crypto. Yes, we know this. Uh, you know, security has been taking heat. Listen, I, I have really limited, I, I started shrinking my uh, securities portfolio last year and really got into reducing a lot of that. I've almost gone completely to cash, crypto, and a hand spattering of securities and real estate. That's that's really kind of the, the mix because I do believe the scenario is going to be opportunistic for us to grab some big sales uh, so the more cash you are in, the better. Uh, do you think other crypto com uh, companies such as Merrill uh, will follow? Yeah, they have to. There's no doubt, uh, D, because their future customer is the millennial. It's probably you. And if if Fidelity, uh, Fidelity gets a, a leg up on this, boys, it's going to be, you know, dominoes through the door, coming fast, for sure. Uh, can't say, uh, anyone to have to educate uh, will already be too late to the party. Uh, they can forget about life changing well. I disagree with you, Kansai. Uh, Kansai. Uh, here's why. We are on the very early edge of adoption in three major areas DeFi, uh, Web3, Meta, and then, yes, Bitcoin, ETH. That's going to be a slow run, but it's still a good investment. Those are fine. Uh, you're not going to see what life changing wealth, but if you put in, you know, if you're really uh, you know, a baller out there, you're doing a million into Bitcoin. And uh, Bitcoin, you know, 5Xs or 10Xs, that was a good play. Uh, those are the kind of things that could play into this. But I think the big numbers are going to happen in metaverse, gaming, and to a certain extent, the altcoin projects that aren't here yet. So be ready for those because a lot of those are going to be releasing between now. Remember, timing. Between now and the next bull run, you're going to start seeing early new projects dropping in. Just like Cardano did, just like Solana did. A lot of those that you already experienced, so for sure. Uh, Jen Smith says, how can you say we're still early when Fidelity is offering a crypto boomer account? Do you really think, come on, Jen, that that is going to get mainstream adoption? This is just, this is virtual signaling, people. Come on. Understand. Play the game. Get out of the matrix. Unplug. Try to get into what's happening here. This is all about playing the game and Financial institutions are years away from this really happening at any scale. So just remember, they're going to put caps on it. They're going to put limitations on it, restrictions, all these kind of things. $50,000? Come on, people. Really? Let's go here. Uh, A-dub, stocks uh, only viable option to consider. Uh, for the average person with a Robinhood account, yes, but I think I would put a Robinhood account up against a, you know, an exchange account uh, in this next run. Head to head, without a doubt, I think uh, the crypto markets win it. Patrick coming in after tax, uh, Gen Z will need two mil in 2060, probably for sure, maybe more uh, by then. Uh, this is all, you know, moving up line for sure. Jeff Fries is, 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 all right, so he says there, there are congressmen who are trying to stop Social Security right now. Well, because it's broken, it, it can't sustain itself. If you study Social Security and the use case and the model and what it's future means it's over already. It's just a matter that it just doesn't know it's dead. And eventually they'll try to fund it. But the problem is there. We've already printed too much money. This does not have a good look uh, coming down the road. So Gen X, you're probably stuck. Uh, millennials, you'll never see it. Um, you know, uh, Gen Z, those will be um, stories that you'll tell your grandchildren that, hey, once, once, in a while, once upon a time, this happened in the United States. Uh, real estate, need to uh, boatload of money to enter that. Not really. I think we're going to start to see some tokenized real estate start to surface out there. And some of these REITs, you know, where you can get into investment clubs, um, those might be start to play into it. Uh, but remember, again, if you're if you're not looking at real estate, I would suggest that you follow uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki. He really does a good job at breaking down real estate and um, debt, how it works, how to play it, how to never pay taxes, those kind of things. Uh, and it's tools that a lot of the wealthy do all the time. These are the normal, everyday procedures 
of the wealthy. But many times people just don't understand how it works. So just be a look. Uh, what are the chances that Bitcoin crypto does not exist when I retire in 20 to 30 years? Well, I think uh, the Delta 9, the fight is on right now. The question will be whether or not CBDCs win. If, if the CBDCs win, then you're right. We're screwed. <laughs> Um, but if we get some sort of delineation, which I think could happen to where both could coexist, then the likelihood of cryptos, Bitcoin, and others like it, possibly even another Bitcoin-like project in 20 to 30 years, will evolve and we'll see a continuation of the blockchain and what blockchain really means for the future. Remember, AI, I think, will play into this. I know a lot of people hate that, but uh, I do think this is going to be a factor that will start to really advance up finance in the future. I should probably do a whole breakdown on that. I've been studying this for years, and it's a very intriguing aspect of where it could be going in the future. Right now, we're dealing with caveman tools. Trust me, caveman tools today. Uh, it's going to change, uh, so be ready for all of this. And the place to catch that is a place called Tech Path. So if you're not listening, you know, if you are listening in over on the podcast, jump over here to the YouTube channel. This is where you're going to get all the good stuff, charts, all that kind of stuff. And it's also uh, a good place to catch these live streams. All you have to do is subscribe, hit that little bell button, and it's going to start sending you feeds and letting you know, notification-wise, that we're going live and help you guys catch an early jump on all these moves. So make sure and do that. If you guys are not in the Diamond Circle, get in now. It's free. What are you waiting on? This is the place to do it. And it's one of the passions for me is to try to help spread uh, at least what I've learned over many, many years of business and finance and media. All right, guys, we'll catch you next time. Uh, don't forget, you can reach me out there on Twitter, at Paul Barron. We'll see you next time right here on TechBath.